All right, so I'm gonna start off really quick about an introduction. So let me share my screen really quick. All right, thanks everybody for coming. So this, welcome. And what I would like to introduce is who we are as a company, we're ideas. And what we are, we are a nonprofit organization. And what we really emphasize is the community with data science, AI, blockchain, big data, anything related to that, that's who we are. And that's what we really focus on. So about us, we build an AI data engineering blockchain hub for everybody that's enthusiastic about it. That's our passion, that's our goal. We're trying to connect each and one of your ideas and just share it with the world. And about that, not only do we host conferences, not only do we do trainings, we also have certificates, we do our own online workshops, webinars, and we also have our own consulting programs. We're fairly new. We just started in February 2016 and we scaled up pretty quickly. Um, our new, our new um, implementation of blockchain, since we have a huge audience on that, has allowed us to scale up even more. So we're excited to do more stuff on that. And in regards to our speakers, we do a lot of conferences. We do it online, offline, at different schools, different locations. So we have a chance to meet a lot of cool different companies, a lot of cool people, um, as you can see here. And just to mention our three or a few main companies that we're partnered with and also our previous sponsors, we've had some partnerships with IBM, Cross Campus, NVIDIA, LinkedIn, um, the school at UT Dallas, and also at USC. And if you're ever interested with any certificates, we also offer that as well. So for SQL, we have that, R, um, Python for Data Science, Recommendation Systems, and NLP. Besides that, um, feel free to jot this email down. You can message us about anything. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And without further ado, I'm gonna stop sharing this and bring you to the real show. Thank you, David, so much for coming. I'll bring it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is David. I'm the CEO of uh, Blockchain, uh, Blockchain Technology Company, and we are the uh, uh, we are the backup of the Moak project. And um, uh, today, um, I'm very glad that I have a chance to um, you know do a little bit more introduction about what Moak project is. And we want to do a uh, little bit into the detail about how to uh, utilize the microchain and the mother chain uh, layout of our uh, project and how to set up a microchain and make it work. So um, I assume um, attendees today, uh, you know already uh, know a lot about uh, blockchain already. So um, I want to do uh, in uh, two steps. One is uh, going through the uh, overall MOAC uh, architecture. And then the second part, will, um, we will dive into the real code and walk through the step-by-step -step to set up a microchain and deploy a uh, simple uh, application or a simple smart contract. Okay, um, I'm going to share my screen uh, right now. Okay, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, can you guys uh, see this? Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, give some quick introduction about the uh, mock um, architecture. So uh, when we look into the blockchain uh, space, we always talking about uh, three very important problems we need to solve. And 
this is the uh, the trilemma problem brought up by uh, Ethereum. And so basically, it says in a blockchain setup, it's very difficult difficult to achieve security, scalability, and decentralization at the same time. And give an example like Ethereum. Uh, it has a uh, up to date. It's about like maybe twenty thousand nodes in the network, and so the decentralization is pretty good, and security is very good. If you want to attack Ethereum network, it's pretty difficult. However, the scalability is not that good. Meaning, if we have a like twenty thousand node right now, if I double the size to forty thousand but the processing power doesn't double. Actually, it just stays the same. So the scalability is not that good. So on the other hand, um, like EOS, uh, you try to you know, uh, increase the scalability uh, doing, you know, by a parallel processing and increase the transaction per second. However, the decentralization is not that great because it only has 21 super nodes. And another section is like, if we look at the side chain solutions, uh, they typically will, you know, uh, have a uh, decentralization because have a uh, blockchain and many, many uh, side chains and scalability is pretty good, but security is not that good because for the side chain, it's, it's very easy to attack uh, given the size uh, of the side chain itself. So, and it, what we want to do is Mark wanted to solve this. We wanted to have a, a blockchain uh, project which can solve these three problems at the same time. And I found that it's not difficult. It's very difficult to solve the, uh, the problem in just one blockchain. But if we have a two layer architecture and we think we can solve uh, that, that problem. So basically we have a bottom layer, we will call it mother chain which is uh, uh, will provide the security and decentralization for the whole system. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a based on POW and it can support many uh, more nodes like, uh, just like Ethereum. It could be uh, uh, consists of uh, 10,000 nodes. And on the top, it's upper layer, we call it microchain. So each microchain is a small set of, um, a blockchain that processing a specific project at one time. So uh, in that way, in the upper layer, we will provide scalability for the whole system. Okay, so how we do this? So basically, uh, when we deploy a smart contract, we'll de uh, deploy smart contract as a microchain rather than just a uh, piece of code in, um, uh, in, like Ethereum. So each smart contract can select its mining nodes, consensus protocol, and rewards. And each um, uh, microchain can store its data storage for the best loop without, you know, affect other microchains. So that's reduce the pressure to store everything in the mother chain. So uh, give a quick uh, idea about Cross chain, so it will be very easy to implement cross chains, uh, cross chain features with micro chains. You can assume that micro chain consists of a lot of nodes. Each node can cross uh, another blockchain and our uh, more blockchain, and they form a customized consensus protocol. And all this communication between like Ethereum and Moak will be handled in a decentralized way. And basically, if you push this concept a little further, you can see that the similar concept can be utilized to cross other network with Moak network or external network with Moak. And we have a already implementation for cross IPFS network and Moak, and the implementation will call Firestorm. So uh, if we you know, each micro ch micro chain could be the base for a application uh, that's just like most uh, blockchain does, and uh, it's so obvious. But we can go a little bit further. So, if we have a micro chain, 
uh, which doing a specific task uh, with its uh, customized um, consensus protocol, like one microchain doing POS, one microchain doing IPFS network storage, and another microchain doing a zero knowledge uh, verification. And maybe another microchain will doing the IoT network. So with those microchains enabled, we can treat them as a service. Now you can build a application on top of multiple microchains, meaning you can create a really powerful application on top of uh, multiple microchain services. So that's that's uh, uh, improved dra that, uh, dramatically compared to the you know traditional single blockchain have a single uh, uh, set of features. Okay, so e open ecosystem. Uh, I don't want to touch this uh, today because it's it's like second layer mining, but you know it just make it open and uh, get a, a positive network, uh, positive uh, feedback loop. Okay, so uh, when we look back, so 2008 Bitcoin was first introduced so that everybody can use token without um, middlemen, we'll, we'll get rid of the bank. And when Ethereum was introduced, it's so easy to deploy token. So everyone can deploy token by just uh, implement a ERC20 uh, smart contract. Now with Mark, we want to make it so easy to deploy a microchain. And so every application will correspond to one microchain or over multiple microchain services. And it will oversee that in the future, that will be a lot of uh, chains. And we'll hope uh, the Mark will be the foundation of internet of chains. Okay, so um, that's the overall Overview of the um, the uh, uh, mock um, uh, the mock architecture. So today I want to really get into the details of the tech uh, technical. Uh, so I want to do I want to do this. So um, so uh, so I want to do a decode mock architecture microchain demo. Um, so we talk about Moac project. The you know the, the 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 major difference is we're using microchain over mother chain. So uh, as I said, uh, microchain is different than uh, other technologies. So why we want to use microchain rather than just deploy a, a smart contract? Okay, scalability first. Uh, smart contract as is a microchain. So we will provide a parallel processing which will process multiple microchains at the same time, meaning we will uh, speed up uh, by the number of microchains. And flexibility. So each microchain can have its own consensus module, consensus protocol, which you can choose. Well, you can always select from the standard pool, and we will provide a um, uh, proc win, we call it proc win. It's like a POS uh, processing, uh, a POS consensus protocol. But you can always customize and create your own consensus protocol. And it will uh, generate block independently, um, the maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or even one minute. It's up to what your application is. And each microchain has localized state storage. Uh, you can store the uh, state in your microchain just specifically for your application purpose. And uh, security, that's a major difference between microchain and side chain. So the microchain is backed up by mother chain and it will have the same level of security as mother chain. I will cover it a little bit later. So uh, we talk about expense. So we will make uh, microchain deployment very easy. Um, hopefully just one click, we can, you can deploy a microchain. And another great feature of microchain is for your DAPP user, you don't need, the user don't need to pay any fee uh, to your application. So it's different than Ethereum. So if you deploy a Ethereum uh, smart contract, 
uh, when user want to call the um, smart contract function, they need to pay gas, which is uh, very expensive. Uh, and well, expensive is one side. The other side is it requires user to have ether beforehand, which is a very, very uh, great demand for the user, meaning you will turn off all the users without any ether. Um, okay, so also microchain is um, a very powerful feature, as I said uh, in the early slides. We have cross chain features and microchain as service. So um, here I have a table uh, that compare a smart contract and a side chain with uh, microchain. So uh, scalability, scalability is you know a smart contract because. We compare a smart contract in Ethereum. Uh, basically, um, it's very slow. Everybody knows the TPS is low. And for microchain, because it processing um, separately, it's pretty high. And side chain have a separate, uh, my, uh, a, a separate uh, chain to do the uh, job, so it'll be uh, very high as well. Um, flexibility, smart contract. Uh, it's low because it's limited to the baseline blockchain, like the consensus protocol and uh, the block generation frequency, like 10 seconds or 15 seconds, it's limited. And for the microchain side chain, uh, because it's a separate chain, it's pretty, pretty high. And security, uh, smart contract is on top of Ethereum, so it has the same level security level as Ethereum, it's pretty good. Microchain, it's backed, by, backed up by the bottom mother chain. The security is pretty high as well. Side chain, but on the other hand, uh, it's on, on, your, on its own. So uh, it's easy to be attacked. So uh, expense, uh, if you want to deploy a smart contract, it's pretty low. You can just you know spend maybe a couple of dollars. You can deploy a smart contract, and in microchain it's it's same. If you want to deploy a microchain, we make it very simple. Uh, you can always select nodes from the pool. I will cover it a little bit later. But for side chain, if you want to deploy a side chain, it's very high, meaning you need to deploy multiple miners. One is miners, and also you need to deploy multiple servers. Basically, you want to deploy a um, separate, uh, separate blockchain. Even it only can this maybe like 20 nodes, you still need to deploy 20 servers. So when you call a smart contract, um, the cost is actually very high because you know the whenever you need to call smart contract you need to pay the gas and like in existing ethereum system you probably uh, uh, you probably need to pay maybe like a dollar for a smart contract execution uh assume like consider you have like thousands of calls on a smart contract each day then the cost will be very high so on microchain, on the other hand, we get rid of the gas requirement on the blockchain. So it's zero, basically. Any user, any user, they can just download your DAPP and they can start to use your DAPP right away. They don't need to pay any gas. Well, in the sidechain case, um, they may reduce gas and in their token, but still there's some amount of gas. They can make it low, though. Uh, depend on how, what they set up. So uh, let's look at the storage. Well, we know that storage store something in smart contract in Ethereum is very, very expensive um, because the storage is limited. And in microchain, it's pretty low. It's, it has a separate uh, blockchain to store the data, which is same case as sidechain. And for maintenance, in smart contract in Ethereum, the maintenance is zero. Basically, you just need to deploy once and the, the smart contract can be used forever um, unless it's killed. So in microchain, um, the maintenance is low. So 
basically for the application uh, developer, you just need to pay the miner. You don't need to, you know, uh, maintain the service. That's it, which is the case for the side chain. You know, the amenities were very high. You need to, uh, you know, even it's 20 nodes uh, side chain or 100 nodes side chain, you still need to maintain those 20 servers or 100 servers. Okay, so this is the overall comparison. Uh, let's take a look what Moak system look like. Okay, as I said earlier, we have two layers. Uh, bottom, we call the mother chain, and on top of it, we call the micro chain. So in the bottom, it's a globally consistent blockchain, just as similar to um, uh, Ethereum. It has a uh, two type of nodes. One is mining nodes, and the other one is we call the V nodes. Well, basically that's the same. They install the same program. They, start, they install the same application. Just one has like GPU capability, so they can do mining. And the other one, they probably do not have GPU. Their mining is meaningless. So, but in our system, they can provide a access point for the top layer. So we call it a V node pool. And on, on the top layer, on the above layer, uh, we have a lot of nodes, we call it SCS nodes, uh, smart contract server nodes. So um, these nodes can register into a, a pool, we call it a pool. Each pool has its, you know, uh, we call it protocol. Like one pool is POS protocol. One pool is like uh, uh, proc wing. That's the name we call uh, for uh, POS like uh, consensus model. So a uh, lots of nodes can join into the pool and they'll be ready to be rent for microchains. So they join the pool first. And then if someone want to deploy a microchain, they just rent maybe 100 nodes out of the pool and work for one microchain. And the another microchain comes in, the, you can maybe rent maybe 20 nodes out of the pool and make 20 nodes work for that microchain. And that's the way it works. So, uh, they be maybe multiple pools. They could even be multiple private pools. If you want to deploy a like private network, you can use our setup as well. If you want to deploy a consortium blockchain or microchain, you can do that too. As long as you define the pool and, if, and you have the nodes inside available for rent. So between the up layer and the bottom layer. So when we create a microchain, uh, it will be initiated from bottom and it will create a microchain and it select all the nodes and periodically those microchain will flush the state into the bottom layer. So the microchain on the top, they will achieve its finality by flushing its state into the bottom layer. And I hope uh, this uh, give you a rough picture of our MOAC system look like. Okay, so why, so I, I talked about like block, uh, microchain is different than a side chain. So, and we claim that uh, microchain has the same uh, security as a mother chain, and which is not the case for side chain. This is because we have a different communication model between nodes inside microchain. So in a side chain setup, uh, each node in, in, in the side chain, they can communicate it to each other. Basically, they form a separate blockchain and they, whatever P2P communication product they use, they will talk to each other. So, meaning if one in, in the uh, side chain is a bad guy, he can easily attack maybe 20 of its peers and brought down the whole side chain. But in our microchain setup, it's different. So the, the nodes inside the uh, microchain, they do not talk to each other directly. 
So what they do is they communicate with a V node. As I said earlier, the V node they do not do they do not do mining, but they provide access uh, entry for the uh, upper layer node. So each SCS will connect to a uh, V node, and all the communication between one SCS node to the other SCS node they were going through the channel between v nodes they will reuse the existing p2p network of the lower layer either by a broadcast ma uh, method or communication channel method so in that way we can avoid a de decentralized or distributed dos between scs and scs must register with v node and paid by the microchain or the traffic will be routed through the bottom layer. So this is very important because that's a great difference between microchain and sidechain. And that's a guarantee that why microchain has a similar level as the mother chain and has a much higher security than sidechains. Okay, I'll uh, uh, briefly talk about this. So uh, let's go back a little bit earlier. So when we do this, we'll do some selection. And we want to make it random because if you have, if you know, in this pool, some nodes may be Byzantine nodes or some, some nodes are bad guys. And we want your selection, because we select a small set of nodes, we want to do it randomly. And we want to do it randomly, but that randomness can be verified. So that's the way we select. We compare the the address of a node and the microchain address and we predefine a index if those two address in the index two or three are close we this will be select for uh, this microchain that's a concept okay so um this uh this is the uh creation uh, overview so we will so this is a bottom layer the mother chain and we will create a several smart contract beforehand one is v node uh, v node pool it's a smart contract so all the v node will register with v node pool we have a scs pool and scs nodes will register and they need to register with bound uh, basically, if they so that create an entry um, barrier uh, to get rid of the you know automatic or you know uh, uh, automatic registration, so that um, if you're doing something badly, your bond will be uh, be uh, forfeited. So uh, if we want to deploy, then the next step will deploy a uh, microchain. So we will deploy a smart contract, contra uh, uh, smart, smart contract. We call it control smart contract and deploy it in the lower layer. Uh, and, and it has all the microchain control logic in it. So behind the thing, uh, behind, uh, behind the scene, it will, you know, doing the selection, as I said earlier, uh, doing a random selection from the pool. Uh, and will uh, all the active nodes, if they are selected, they need to, they have to uh, positive uh, acknowledgement. And then if I have enough nodes joining for a microchain, I, I just, you know, uh, create the microchain and it will start to, you know, generating blocks just as a regular blockchain. And afterwards I can deploy a, uh, the, Business logic. Uh, remember that's on the uh, in the top layer. So control logic. So the blockchain has the microchain have two parts. One is uh, control logic. It's in the bottom layer, and the other part is business logic. That's like how your applications handle your specific user request, and it's deployed in the microchain layer. Uh, it's on the upper layer. So all the calls to the business logic well we, well we call it direct contract call so this contract call is not not processed by the bottom layer it's it's a process on the top layer 
And uh, this part will get rid of gas. So doing this, you have to pay gas. But for this, uh, we get rid of the gas. So any user can call the business logic on the application. Okay, so as I said, uh, hold on. Uh, uh, yeah, the presentation will be available um, in the section, uh, after section, and we'll, we'll also together with the applications I, 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 I demoed in this uh, presentation. So, uh, as I said earlier, microchain pre-requirement, we have two uh, requirements. So we need to deploy a protocol pool, uh, which all SES nodes will join um, uh, in this. And this is a smart contract deployed in mother chain. And uh, or any SES nodes, if you wanna be a member of this pool, you can just download our SES application. And if you have a network, that would, that's enough. And then you just register yourself as a SES node inside the pool. And you are, you are available for the micro chain to, like, uh, to uh, employ you uh, as a node for the micro chain. And the other thing is you need to specify a bound, uh, meaning if you are doing great, doing bad things, the money will be, you know, forfeited. And the, other, and the second requirement is we will have a, another VNode uh, pool. Uh, it's also a smart contract deployed in Mother Chain, as I said earlier. And it uh, will store a, a VNode module. Um, it's different than this, uh, but it's just like, it, this module is sa same to the miner. The, the only difference is miner, they will do GPO mining, but you, you just doing the, um, provide access uh, service. Um, okay, so um, uh, demo setup. So, okay, now um, uh, I have already deployed the uh, two protocols and I can um, check it here. Uh, let me uh, go to this, uh, hold on nodes okay so we have a, a test network set up we call it uh, has an id 101 and uh, so uh, let me refresh okay so uh there are already three uh protocol pool that's the scs pool uh as i said earlier uh, uh, we can have multiple pools. So here we have uh, three pools uh, already deployed. Uh, one is uh, proc wind David, that's I deployed, uh, and another proc wind and a fast storm. So proc wind is a just uh, um, the protocol that process uh, smart contracts, and fast storm is a specific protocol, it will uh, it implement a uh, Filecoin-like um, consensus protocol. So it provides a decentralized file system, which is similar to what Filecoin want to do. And we already implemented those. Um, but today we'll just uh, try Procwin. It's just doing uh, smart contract processing. So it has a minimum bound of one. So if you want to register to this, you can download SES application, but you need to summon at least one MOAC token to join this one. And currently already seven nodes being registered inside this, so available to, uh, for, uh, available to employ. So I will use this one to uh, start my microchain setup. And this is a VNode pool, as I said, uh, earlier, so there is a uh, VNode pool. So this VNode pool will be available for user to uh, connect into. They provide the the entry entry service. So uh, let me. So I have those two pools already available. So if later you want to try, you can also using this existing um, uh, protocol pools. Uh, you can always, you know, deploy your own uh, protocol pool 
and you have other maybe just maybe two or three SES nodes set up and connect to those. Um, see, uh, okay, here it is. So that's the node info. Uh, and there's, we have a, uh, uh, we have a uh, explorer for the test network uh, running. So this is a test network. Um, uh, what well, is the price? And that's the current mining hash, which is pretty low. We only have one or two uh, GPU miner for this. So you probably don't need to uh, mine, uh, waste your uh, GPU hash power on this. We have one for them. Uh, because you have one you know, GPU mining and then we'll increase hash rate, we'll reduce the, uh, it will, you know, if you all leave and it will, the network will suffer from a sudden drop of the hash and will make the block generation slower. So if you need token, you can always ask us. We can give you some test tokens you can use. And there is a nice thing about this explorer. Basically, you can, this is the information about the mother chain. You can also uh, get into this one and check your microchain information. I will show that later. Okay, so um, uh, let's go back to this. Okay, so um, now we have a, a SES pool I will use this one and a Vino pool I use for this one. Okay, so well still, uh, if I wanna start, I want to have some setup. Uh, locally, so I need to deploy a vNode in my local, um, uh, which is uh, by this command. So I uh, have that one already running, so it's running already. So I can go to the, you know, we provide a wallet uh, application. So we can go to this one. So this one is the, it's similar to uh, Ethereum um, wallet and it connects to the local. So it, have, it shows the current block number and uh, my local account. And um, that's the, uh, the monitor. I will talk that a little bit later. Okay, so, all right. So I'm ready for my first, microchain creation. So, um, so if you want to deploy a microchain, so you first need to, uh, let's go back this a little bit again. So uh, just to refresh your memory, uh, you need to deploy uh, control logic first. Yeah, remember, uh, microchain has two parts. One is the control logic in the bottom layer and business logic in the upper layer. We need to deploy the control logic first. So um, let's see, I have a contract and deploy new contract. And I have a, um, so the contracts here ready, I just copy and paste into this one. And uh, the contract could be available. Uh, it's available in my, in our um, GitHub, so these two contracts. So um, just copy and paste. Um, uh, it's a, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit big, so it take a while to compile. Um, so I want to deploy from, uh, let's wait for this to finish. Okay, uh, no compile errors. So I select the account from account six, which has like 400 tokens available for this demo. And I will pick up a contract. So there are multiple contracts defined in the source code. So I select, select this one, subchain base. Subchain base contract has one, two, three, four, five, six, six constructor uh, parameter. The first one you need to specify what the um, uh, uh, protocol address, the SCS protocol address, like you can get from this one. So this is one I'm going to use for the uh, SES protocol pool. 
So I select this, and you also need to specify the VNode protocol base, uh, which is this one I can use. This is, all these are public, uh, but you can, you know, as I said, you can always deploy your own SCS protocol pool and all your own VNode protocol pool. So here I select the public one, and he will specify the minimum nodes for your microchain. I uh, will put in one. You can specify, if you want to like need a 20 nodes, you can specify 20. Uh, for maximum, I just for demo purpose, I put five. So, so I need a microchain which consists of at least one node and at most five nodes. And thousands, uh, this is a little bit tricky. So what does this mean? So let's go to this one. So suppose you have 10,000 nodes in the uh, pool and you only want to select like 100. So meaning you want to select 1% out of those 10,000 nodes. But in our case, um, we only have seven nodes and we want a five, one to five. So meaning uh, I want to using 100%. So meaning this is a 1,000 of, 1,000 no, 1,000. And this is a flush run, meaning, uh, so we said periodically, microchain will flush its state into the bottom layer. So here, this is a place you can specify how often uh, the flush happens. So I can put 100 blocks. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm ready to deploy. Remember the deployment of this control logic is into mother chain. So uh, see uh, the gas is pretty high because the smart contract is pretty big. Okay, it's deployed. Uh, it's running, uh, you know, waiting for it's broadcasted the contract into the uh, system and wait for it to be mined by other miners. So it looks like it's done already. Uh, we can click on this and it go into the uh, microchain control logic, see what it is. So maximum number five, which we specified, there was a block reward. The block reward is, you know, we have multiple nodes working for me. And for each block, they generate what amount of token I need to reward them. So meaning all the nodes, or these nodes inside this, if they are employed by your microchain, they will get paid for any block they generated. So that's a reward level. So node list, we skipped it for now. So there are a lot of things we don't need to cap about right, right now. The only thing is we want to see the node count. Node count. So node count me is the number that work for your microchain. It currently is zero because we just set up the control logic. Now we need to tell um, the SES nodes or select SES nodes to work for us. So uh, let's go back to the slides. So uh, we deployed a microchain control logic already. Next step is calling register open. So what it does is you will automatically select the number of SES nodes working for the microchain and we're waiting for enough SD nodes to join in. Uh, so what it do is we will call register open on the uh, smart contract we just deployed. So we wanna, so we need to start from the creator. So if I uh, ask you from another account, it will work. So only the creator is able to open the registration. And we will do SQL. Transaction send. Um, it's, uh, it's broadcast to the network and the miner see the network is mining uh, this transaction. So let's wait for a while. One contract has more than 10,000 lines. 
uh, while the control log is a little bit complicated, yes, we, we, uh, the control log is pretty, a uh, little bit complicated. Uh, okay, so um, the Redis Open is already executed in the network, but we need to wait a little bit longer uh, for the, you know, uh, as I said, let's go to the, so, okay, here. So we deploy a control logic in the bottom layer and automatically select the nodes based on the parameter we set in the uh, constructor. And you will notify the nodes in the SCS pool and it will determine, each node will determine if it's has being selected by this microchain creation. If it is, it will summon another transaction uh, back to the, uh, uh, back to this and then confirm their enrollment. So we can verify this by going to, um, let's see, so, um, okay, it looks like we have something already. So we go back to the uh, smart contract. Uh, we, uh, I said previously, uh, we said the node count was zero, right? Now the node count is four, meaning that have four nodes already joined this smart contract. Oh, no, sorry, already joined this uh, control logic. So meaning join the, this micro chain I just created. So we can go to the uh, node list. We can see what's the address of those four nodes. So zero is 7D. One is this address, two is this address, four is this address. So if we look at this, we have seven nodes available for joining. And I set a limit between one and a five, and looks like a four join, joined um, my uh, micro, my, micro chain. Well, the, I don't know about these three, maybe they are down because they're controlled by the other people. I don't know what they are. But, but the good news is we already have four, which reach our minimum requirement, uh, which is, you know, we want at least one and we have four now. So, so things is pretty good. So what's the next step? So the next step, uh, next step is we want to call register close, meaning uh, from, now between last the Redis open call till now, it's open for the SES to join in. And uh, it's automatic. Uh, you don't need to, you know, the SES no, do not need to do it manually. It, the way it's automatic. So now we want to we have enough nodes, so we'll call the Redis close. So this one will trigger microchain initialization and block generation. So we will see. Uh, let's go to, let's call Redis to close. And remember, we need to use the same owner to call this. So we just file up this uh, function call and we go to this and wait it to be mined. And so basically behind the scene, you will notify all those four nodes. We have already four nodes being joining. They, they claimed they are join, they want to join this microchain. And now register close will notify them. And they, once they receive the uh, notification, they will start up their, you know, uh, internal logic. And they will do, you know, um, processing. And they start to doing the uh, block generation. So, okay. Um, Okay, so let's see any question. One country has more than oh, that's been answered already. Uh, done. Okay. Um, so let's see. So we go back to this. This is a control logic, and we need to know what's happening on the top layer. 
And this is like, what's the next step then? So next step is we want to have a entry point into the microchain. So we call it monitor. So, okay, so here's the thing. So we have this microchain uh, up and running. Uh, well, remember the business logic is not ready yet. We haven't deployed any business logic yet. But the blockchain is ready, meaning the SES nodes already being selected. And hopefully they already doing block generation behind the scene. But how do I know? So we need a monitor to get into this microchain. Remember, this is a microchain only have four nodes and we have a network and only those four nodes will have the information of this microchain. So we need to have a monitor to be a part of this microchain and the monitor will provide a RPC service to the outside world. And remember those SES nodes, they don't provide any kind of RPC service. It's closed. They just do, you know, do a mine, what a miner should do. They generate blocks, processing smart contracts, processing transactions. They don't provide any service. So for in order for us to know the microchain inside information, we need to deploy a monitor. So uh, fortunately, uh, we, you probably don't need to, well, well, so I just want to uh, do a little bit more uh, 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 elaboration about monitor. So this is a typically a setup of a DAPP works. So DAPP have a backend. The backend normally need to deploy a, some kind of uh, connection into the, um, uh, into the blockchain. And they will normally deploy a monitor uh, as a app developer, they will deploy a monitor for their application purpose. And in our setup, we make it much flexible. Everyone, you can deploy a monitor to this microchain. And if your application or you just want to know this information, you can bring that. So remember what, how MetaMask works. So MetaMask works, works is it? They just like a, a, a RPC service uh, to your application. And you know, when you have a, a plugin in your browser uh, to access MetaMask, every time you want to access Ethereum network, the MetaMask will go in through its back end server, probably one or two multiple connector which connect into the blockchain system. So all your application request is routing through this way. And we call it, this is like single point of failure if you're using MetaMask. If MetaMask service is down, your application loses connection to the blockchain. But in our microchain setup, if this is down, you can always register another monitor or even you can have multiple monitor existing at the same time. And each user and user, they can deploy a monitor as well. They can have the access to the microchain. So this is a fully decentralized way. But this I, I just cover a little bit, but for now, but just, you know, for the common use, you can just go into this way. Uh, anyway, so, um, uh, so now I need to register a SES as a monitor. As I said, the monitor need to provide a RPC service, meaning it have a public IP address and a port be open. So I can, cannot do it in my local. So uh, I have already deployed in the server and uh, here's the address. So I will just, uh, uh, I just copy this. So what you need to do to register a monitor is you just uh, select register as a monitor and you provide a monitor wallet address and uh, you can specify from anyone. And the other thing is you need to spend, uh, you need to spend some money because as I said, monitor will try to synchronize with other 
nodes, meaning you will uh, get uh, nodes from those. And you don't want to, you know, someone over, you know, abuse uh, this one and, you know, deploy hundreds of monitors. And then all of a sudden, all the nodes will be busy to provide uh, synchronization information to your node. So this node, uh, every time you ask for a block, you need to pay them, basically. So you need to provide some amount for your monitor to be synchronized. If you deploy a monitor earlier, uh, you, you probably just need to a smaller, much smaller um, uh, token. And if you, you know, want to monitor a really old uh, blockchain, you need to best value the more token to synchronize everything. And we will provide a faster synchronization later. Uh, basically, after, you know, remember, we will flush everything into the block. So ideally, you really just don't need to sync from the beginning. You just need to sync from the point where the last flush happens. Um, well, anyway, so I'm going to uh, register a monitor. So um, I waited to complete. So now it's complete. Let me, um, uh, well, behind thing, you will try to synchronize. Let's go to this one, the Explorer. Um, let's, hold on, let me have any questions. How can I get the presentation after? Uh, we will post it on the website. So we will doing the micro chain. Uh, so we will, because you know, in our, in our test network, there may be thousands of applications and thousands of microchains. And our explorer cannot show, show them at the same time, obviously. So we need to uh, specify the, uh, uh, the uh, monitor. So you need to specify the monitor address, uh, which is, uh, let me see, where is the, okay. Um, I think it's here. Okay. And the part which I know is this one, which is open to public and the control microchain address. Uh, I need to get a microchain address from here. Uh, from, from here. Okay, this is the, this is the, uh, the micro chain I want to monitor. So once I done, I get into the um, micro chain information page. Oh, here it is. See, uh, so this is a micro chain address, which is I just generated this one. And remember, we have four nodes. These four nodes are the miner for this microchain. And you know, we went through the uh, uh, this one. You know, zero, one, two, three. We can shoot this, and it shows the same thing here. Okay, one, two, three, four. And it gave me the microchain balance with two and uh, reward. That's the, as I said, that's the, uh, the miner, whenever they generate a block for the system, uh, you will uh, get a reward. So bounded limit is one, that's one we specified in the uh, constructor. We have SCSS. VR reward is uh, the reward for the access uh, service. And uh, now we have uh, 55 blocks already being running. We can fresh, refresh. Uh, just now with 50, oh, 62 right now. So, okay. All right, so the block, the microchip is running already uh, using four existing SAS nodes. And let me go to what's the next step. Oh, okay. So 
The next step is I, we want to deploy business logic. So I want to, you know, I have a micro chain, but the micro chain is used to host my application. So I need to deploy a micro chain. So uh, business logic. So it will be deployed in micro chain and the business logic, app logic. If you want to have a token, that's fine. So as I said earlier, so all this from now on, we will deal with the top layer. We, we will no longer deal with the bottom layer. Bottom is the mother chain. Now we will deal with micro chain. So we will fire up some direct call. Uh, and direct call is, will not be processed in the bottom layer. It will be processed in the top layer. So the, the major difference is we have a sharding flag is one. If it's one, every node will notice, oh, that's a up layer uh, function call, and it will forward it to the up layer. If it's zero, it will process on the bottom. So uh, now uh, let's, um, I have a very simple application. So this is my um, uh, business, business logic. So it's a contract, smart contract. What it does has a you know value. Uh, you can treat it as a token, or whatever meaning you want to give it to. And in the constructor, it initialized value to be one hundred. It has two functions. One is increase. The other is decrease. Increase is at one. Decrease just minus one. So okay, I have this already being uh, compiled. And uh, uh, the compile code is this. So um, remember uh, this one? We use the interface, we file up all the transactions into the mother chain. We will make the uh, micro chain call also in this, but now it's, it's, a, it's a, today it's not available yet, unfortunately. So, I will file up this transaction from the console, from my local uh, console. Uh, see, so this is one, the console connect to my local vNode. So um, let me see, I need, what, why, what I need to set up this transaction. So I, I need to send from anyone from my local account. And I need to send to the subchain, the microchain address. So I need to specify this. Uh, so because that's the new uh, transaction I just created, so I need to copy. And uh, uh, I have a, a shorter way to do this. Uh, have this. So basically, here I have the ABI and just load it and I can have this ready. So load script. So now subchain base dot address. That's the one, is this one? Let's just come from A520, yes. So this is the A520. So uh, this is one, I just uh, make it instead of just hard code. And it'll provide a gas and the gas price. Remember the sharding flag. We have to set it to one because uh, it will be routed to the top layer. And there is another one. It's very interesting. We call it via, meaning uh, we need to specify which trans which function calls through which V node. And that's important because we. Uh, we want to, you know, for anyone provide a service for your entry, they get paid. Okay, so um, let me load this script and all I need to do is just deploy code. And uh, remember this is uh, be executed in the top layer. So we do not have any um, uh, feedback here. We don't have anything here. 
we will, however, there's one way we can check. So from the monitor information, microchip information, see this is all the zero transactions. Uh, we can see if any transaction being executed by the top layer blocks, top layer miners. So, okay, oh, here it is. We have transaction executed here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so remember we have a monitor being ready that can provide RPC service. So uh, we have a way, uh, we have a way to, you know, interact with the RPC service. So basically, uh, here's the, uh, here's the monitor address and that's the RPC service interface we can use. And what we can do is we provide a, a this format and it will give me the uh, contract information. So we need to provide the um, um, subchain address uh, in the RPC, RPC query, uh, which is this one. This is the, okay, yeah, this one. So this is one that will query um, this microchain through the monitor and it will send. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, okay, we got some information back. Uh, so basically, we have a uh, balance and announce and a code and a code hash code uh, code that's the code we uh, recently deployed this is code um, okay so and i have the storage and we have the information we need and let me do this again. Um, let's see, just, there are two transactions, which is a little bit of normal, but I want to find out why. Okay, so, um, okay, so 109. So the next thing we can do is, remember in our, uh, uh, in our app logic, we have uh, a function called increase. So what we can do right now is we can call this, uh, just execute this and see what's the value. So let me do this. Um, call, so already loaded. So uh, it has a parameter, um, meaning the nouns. So we need to specify the proper nouns. If the nouns is incorrect, it will be ignored. So remember we already deployed once, so let's announce one, the second one will be two. So uh, uh, file up the call on the upper layer again, and we check the monitor, see if the execution being executed. So last block is 110, 106, 116, it's not still not there, wait a while. Uh, let's wait a while for it to update. Okay, so I think, I think why? Uh, because we deployed this and uh, accidentally we caught this already. So I need to call this with uh, an ounce of three, see what happens. So my assumption is um, this time it will, it will succeed. So let's see, 117 block. Okay, here we go. So in 120, uh, block 120, this function be, get executed. So uh, let's query this again. Uh, remember the value was 65. Uh, let's do it again. Okay, so being increased by two, uh, by one. Okay, so we can do it again. Uh, increase the member uh, by four. 
Uh, let's check. This one last block is 120. Okay, 124. So 120, one transaction executed, and 124, another transaction executed. So we can ensure uh, that the state, uh, this will increase by one as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, to summarize, so basically, uh, we need to, you know, the direct call will be followed up from the bottom, but it will be actually executed on the top layer. And you can use the um, uh, RPC service to query the state. You know, this one is very obvious. You know, we only have one uh, data member in the system uh, in this contract. So if I have a complicated one, you should be able to get a list of your uh, variables, uh, data members. And we will provide a better interface well, similar to this, uh, similar to this, uh, instead of launch from the terminal. Okay, uh, let me see. So we covered this already. So oh, this is the, you know, the query uh, formats. Um, I think that's pretty much it for today's demo. So to summarize, I create a uh, deployed a uh, deployed a microchain. So VNode pool and SES pool are already publicly available, and I deployed a microchain control logic first. And internally, the control logic will select four nodes from the pool, and those four nodes join my microchain. And then I deploy a business logic, which is a simple smart contract, which only have one data member, and it's deployed on the top layer. And then I call on the business logic uh, to increase the value, uh, and it's also processed in the top layer. So, and everything can be um, viewed from the explorer uh, in this microchip page. Um, I think that's the pretty much the today's uh, demo. Uh, let me see if anyone has any questions. Uh, anyone can presentation? Anyone how can I get the presentation after the session? It will be posted online. Uh, okay. Yeah, the same question. Okay, so I leave. Uh, this to uh, you know to, to the audience. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, let me put this back. So hopefully. Uh, let's see. Okay, chat. Okay, so, all right, so, uh, what's the limitation of drawback of uh, microchain, uh, if any? Uh, so, a uh, lot of information. Okay, so one ask, what's the drawback of microchain? So, obviously, uh, microchain cannot solve everything. Um, what it does is try to solve the existing um, uh, bottleneck of the SRAM and provide a better uh, architecture for the APP. And hopefully, we can create a uh, DAPP friendly environment and make, you know, make DAPP so easy to deploy a microchain. So if you have a micro, uh, if you want to deploy a DAPP right now, uh, so your first uh, approach, maybe just deploy a smart contract in Ethereum. I think that's probably 90% of the developer want to do. Um, however, you suffer the 
couple of problems. One is, you know, uh, it's, it's expensive. Uh, so all your uh, smart contract call uh, need to pay gas. Uh, it's very expensive. And so normally you will probably do some offline, you know, combination, try to consolidate multiple transactions into one and try to you may, maybe save some, uh, save some cost. So the other, the other problem is, you know, it limits uh, your user base. So basically you pretty much require, you know, all your users will be uh, from crypto community. Uh, if your user is from your, you know, regular mobile uh, network space, they don't have any user. They cannot execute any smart contract. They are being automatically being, you know, shut down uh, from your application. I think that's not the, what application developer wants. So we will, we create a uh, micro architecture, meaning every user can just use the app application right away without uh, paying any gas. So, um, I think the drawback is, you know, we are still in our early stage. Uh, we have all the features ready, but we, you know, uh, as a um, uh, as a as a big platform like us, we provide a lot of things, and we try to solve a lot of uh, problems. And we we know we can solve a lot of them, but we there are some, um, and we are also sure there's some problem we cannot solve, and. Also, at the early stage, we probably still have a, a lots of uh, bugs, problems, and you know that's you know how the community will try to help us. You know, you can try to use our system. If you see any problem, give us a feedback. We will try to solve as soon as possible. So, but with all the potential and the capability we provide, we hope Mark and with its microchain. Uh, platform will provide a much useful platform for the application developers. And let's see what's next question. Uh, in short, this is adding one more layer to increase capability. That's right. So basically, we have the bottom layer provide the security and decentralization. We have the second layer on top to increase scalability. Okay, how to use Python to write up a smart contract? Um, well, currently we only support Solidity and EVM. Uh, later, we will make it more, you know, flexible. Um, you know, as you, as you see, uh, we have a uh, second layer. Um, so uh, let's go to this. Uh, slides. So, well, you probably don't want to change this too much, too often, you know, the microchain control log. But for the business log, you are open to use any other virtual machine like Java virtual machine or uh, Python or even just, you know, C++ binary. So only what you do is you just um, uh, create your own consensus protocol and uh, your own, you know, how you handle your uh, smart contract. And currently we released a uh, ProcWin and Firestorm, which is using EVM. But, you know, in the future, we can provide a, you know, more uh, uh, support on the other languages like Python or C++ or Java. Uh, that's possible. Okay. SCS node and vNode must be a full node. Well, so first, SCS node and vNode are different. Uh, SCS node, uh, let me go to the top layer. So SCS node is a just a process small contract. It, it's, a, it's a, we have a, we will release two uh, separate applications. One is for SCS node, one is for vNode. They are totally different. So vNode, uh, it, it could be a full node or could be a, um, a light node. That's okay. Uh, the only thing is it, 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 do not, it does not do mining. 
And SCS node is a different node. It, it, it runs on a different uh, binary. Well, you can call it a full node as, uh, as long as it's in uh, microchain uh, concern. So for the microchain itself, the, the node inside microchain, you can call it a, a, a full node for that microchain. So this one's done. Any other questions? Okay. Can I get the lesson video or the PPT from somewhere? Um, I believe this, uh, this is, uh, um, the webinar is on Zoom, so it has a uh, video feature. So you should be able to uh, be, uh, it should be recorded and published somewhere. I, uh, I will check with ideas and they, they should be able to public. And also we will provide the slides uh, in this presentation and all the applications. Uh, well, uh, they should be already running, uh, available in the uh, uh, GitHub, uh, in the release section. See, we have, uh, uh, yeah, 1.01. And well, it's the, the SCS module is not released yet, but it will release pretty soon. So we have this one already running, and this one will be released maybe within a week. Okay. Uh, any other questions? A lot of information. Yeah, it's, it is a lot of information, basically, um, regarding the, you know, uh, smart country it needs a lot of information knowledge about how smart country works and how internally those uh, the blockchain works uh, okay so then you say the control lock is the controller to the microchain the business logic is application layer contract that could be different for each microchain depend on the application microchain do is right yes so um so uh the control logic uh we we will we will release a, a a a standard template uh for control logic uh all you want to do is you just need to specify some constructor parameters like uh how many nodes you want uh what the protocol you want to select what v node pool you want to select um so that's uh uh that's the uh well no longer available anyway and you can select how often you want to your microchain flush into the bottom layer and uh, yeah that's pretty much and for the business logic it's it's up to you so basically this is my business logic obviously it's very simple you can you, know, you can create whatever you want and the control logic you will most likely you will use the template we provide okay that's done Let's see any Okay. Any other questions? Uh, if not, Randy, are uh, you still there? Uh, wait, maybe another question. And about synchronization between microchain and the mother chain, how it work? Okay, so one in one shot, we do not need to synchronize between microchain and the mother chain. So they are each work independently. The only thing we need to do is we do a uh, flush. So like after 100 blocks, 
uh, microchain want to flush its uh, state, which you don't need to flush everything. You probably just uh, flush a hash into the uh, mother chain. So in that way, uh, basically, your state had a, the state in the microchain has a finality, which is recorded in the mother chain. So in case anything happened, you want to, you know, uh, retrace back or whatever you want, you have a, you know, checkpoint, which already write, written into the mother chain. And that's already down, you cannot change it. So uh, you don't need to synchronize your state, your like a data storage into mother chain. Those data are only stored inside your, um, uh, inside your, uh, inside the SCS node. Obviously they have all your blockchain data and they also inside the monitor. So remember monitor was synchronized with um, SCS node. So all these nodes inside the microchain, they have all your data. Other than this node, no other nodes or anywhere will have your information of your microchain. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Done. Um, okay, anyone else have any questions? Okay, um, as a new learner, how to begin? Okay, uh, that's a great question. So I think the first thing um, you probably want to need to try is if you are not familiar with how smart contract works, you can, you know, uh, you probably want to do not want to dive into microchain too much. Uh, so later we will release a one click deploy a microchain feature. So in that case, you probably don't need to understand the behind thing uh, scenario, how microchain is created. So all you need to focus is on how smart, smart contract works. Uh, anyway, because for your application, for if you wanna deploy a DAPP, all you need to focus is on the DAPP business logic. Basically, uh, most likely it's a smart contract and you just need to focus on that. And we provide a, uh, whole set of architecture for you to deploy your uh, smart contract into the microchain. So if you want to start, I think you can, you know, you can try how to deploy uh, how smart contract works, how to deploy a smart contract, how to execute a smart contract function and how the data inside this uh, smart contract being stored. And then you have a better idea uh, how smart contract works, and then you can develop a smart contract specific for your application. I think that's the way. Um, and we try to make it as simple as easier as deploy a smart contract in Ethereum. Uh, and then we, we want to uh, get rid of all the tedious work to create a uh, microchain. Um, so that's our uh, goal. Uh, okay. Hopefully this answers your question. Um, what are different resources to learn Solidity? Well, I think uh, with the way, uh, why we choose Solidity is because uh, Ethereum has put a lot of, lots of efforts to, to improve the, uh, to lower down the learning curve, how to use Solidity. And there are lots of uh, tutorials online. And we want to make it, you know, our platform to be uh, utilized that, that already available resources. So you can, you can 
get into the Ethereum uh, Develop Network and you can, you know, learn uh, Solidity there. And there are lots of uh, great tools like uh, Truffle and they are like a Remix uh, website. You can, you know, uh, uh, step debugging your application. So there's a lot of tools available there. Um, yeah, okay. All right, uh, any more questions? Can I use MetaMask to manage Moloch? Um, that's the that's one thing we want to work right now. So as I said earlier, so we um, uh, uh, as I said earlier, this is typically a MetaMask setup works. So you have application, you will install a MetaMask plugin your browser. So whenever you want to access the access the um, uh, uh, microchain, uh, uh, blockchain, smart contract, you are using MetaMask. So assume this is a MetaMask, you will go in through this way. And we provide a different way, but we want to, you know, to, this way still works. So we want to make uh, MetaMask compatible with microchain setup. Uh, but there will say a little bit, you know, updates need to be, uh, uh, create to to be done uh, before we release the MetaMask, but yeah, we are we are working on this uh, for uh, for MetaMask like uh, work, but we will make it more generalized um, in this way. So, meaning you can have multiple you know decentralized access into the microchain uh, to access IPC service. Okay. All right, so uh, if no more questions, um, I will give this uh, back to the host. I will stop share my screen. And uh, Randy is not here anymore, uh, but I think it's okay. Um, uh, I appreciate everyone to join this webinar. So this is a you know, we released our uh, mainnet like uh, three months ago. Uh, we actually, yes, three more months ago. And we released our uh, microchain features uh, last end of last month, like a week ago, half a week ago. So want to make it, you know, uh, easy for app developers to, uh, to better to use blockchain uh, easier. So that's our uh, goal, and we will provide a similar seminar or webinar uh, in the coming weeks. And uh, um, thank you very much for attending, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the future. All right, thank you.